guy. Yeah. It's like you got to have new blood. But at the same time, I have all the ties to the old blood. So I'm really conflicted. Yeah. I'm like. We live. Wait, what happened? I didn't do that. I think we're live. Uh oh, I dude, I didn't do that. <laughs> I didn't do that. Oh yeah, shit! Oh. Was live. <laughs> what? That was live. Well, I think we just came on. I think we just started. Oh shit! What I say? What I say? I don't know what you were saying, but I just saw it pop on my screen right now. Oh, what I say? What I say? What I say? Gary, Gary's talking all the hot, spicy gossip here behind the scenes. I don't know. I don't think any of it went on though. <sighs> Basically, what I was saying, like, so perfect example is Chance Shaw, when his dad, when Dan Shaw was telling me Chance wanted to beat me when I was 18. If you're if you're if you're a father to a son, you're rooting for them to beat you one day. But at the same time, you're not trying to make it easy for them. Right. You're not just going to you're not just going to lay down. Of course. Like. So I feel like when we discuss the the old guard versus the new guard, it's like I have all the ties with the old guard and I'm rooting for the new guard. But yeah. at the same time, I want to, you know, I don't want the, them to just fold. You know what I mean? Right. right. So, so ladies and gentlemen, obviously, we're talking about all of the events from over the weekend. Uh, we had, of course, Chance Sean John Brzezink. We had Vitaly Lalatin versus Krasimir Kostadinov. Uh, we had a bunch of stuff going on in Ontario. And, of course, we had a bunch of super matches out in Newfoundland where I had a super match and a crazy left-hand king of the table. And, my God, this has been my favorite weekend probably in the last year and a half. Dude, it was epic, although I... I... Barely know what happened in P- PAL. I didn't have time for that business. Yeah, not too much. Dude, before we get into that, I swear I did not push live. You must have just zapped you on. I usually, from the Zoom, I go, I click a, a fake live, which takes me yeah. to the YouTube back and end. Previews, and then, that, then I, yeah, then a previous. Okay. Okay. Before we get into that, let's, uh, Okay, Uncle John, you had a match. I just watched it. You just posted the edited version. Yeah. Got to get you out of the way. You're the warm-up. You're the warm-up match. Yeah. Uh, and uh, FYI, if you're out in the chat, hang out. Uh, we think – I'm not 100% sure. I don't – you know, I feel weird, like, guaranteeing, like, you know, John Brzezink. He said he may come on. You know, I don't want to promise it, but I think – Uncle John says he's never talked to John Brzezink. Never in my life. It's crazy. Yeah. And then before that, well, I we watched, have- I watched, I watched it last week when you had him on last week. And he was like, oh yeah, Uncle John, is he like your, your, he's, he's like the producer and Gary, you're the expert on arm wrestling. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> what does John Brzezink think of me? He doesn't have a clue. I am. <laughs> uh, I like. I I'm the expert. <laughs> uh, me, but so John Brzezink may come on. But before that, we do have a guaranteed guest, Mr. Ryan Espy. I um uh, going going back to what I, I I don't know what conversation was heard or not heard, but it's like I have ties emotionally. Uh, to to the guys I knew back in the day. It's like, yeah, of course, yeah. So when you talk about like, you know, so when you talk about this four way, and I, who's the fourth guy? Alex Kurdecha. Kurdecha. I know nothing about Alex Kurdecha. Yeah, he's so, really come on, uh, you know, in the last like five years. Yeah. So it's like if I'm like rooting for somebody, am I going to root for Alex, or am I going to? It's like so I got Ryan, Derek, Chance. I was we were the whole thing as we were talking. I was like, am I getting in trouble by picking? picking right. a winner and i'm like maybe i shouldn't because i don't want to hurt people's feelings look i'm i'm picking winners these days uh and i'm not uh you know shying away from it i'm doing a lot of it on my members only section of my of my club but i don't know it's, it'll be interesting i already know who i'm picking in that match for sure and you have them did you you have a members only i looked it's like 30 yeah. bucks 
Yeah. And you, so have, and you have, because I was looking on your chat, you have people that have little icons. Yeah. Yeah. Cooper Maxwell is my first, my first bro. So if you want to, like, I give like a general uh, review of like the stake, right. Of all the stakeable matches, blah, blah, blah. Then I give my picks uh, on the members only area. And this was very, when I announced this, it was very uh, uh, people, some people really liked it and some people really hated it. And they think that it's bad for me to try to do that or something, I guess. I don't know. I don't, I don't even it's have kind of fun. That. Dude, that's, that's amazing. You have somebody giving you money like that. That's, that's a badass. Yeah. Okay. Man. So anyways, to, to kind of wrap up that conversation, I remember Ryan Espy as being, you know, one of the dog, one of the yeah, big dogs. He's one of like the boys. he's, uh, you know, he's got the, the, the pedigree. Well, he appears historically. He pulls yeah. it. He appears there. Yeah. Yeah. So when I think to myself, I mean, I, I, my brain just not knowing every fact thinks is Ryan the favorite. That's what my brain wants mm. to say. Is is he the favorite? We'll bring him on and talk to him. I'm yeah. sure he's going to say he is. But I, if we polled people, would they say that? I would think. Well, it's really, it depends on where the poll is, right? If it's, it's hard to say. I think Ryan should be the favorite based on his accomplishments. Uh, would he be the favorite online? I don't know. I think probably Chance, maybe Derek. Derek has so, uh, the, the, out of all four, I think Derek has the biggest following at this point. I haven't checked Chance since the John match though. So that could have risen up. Um but you know, Ryan, I mean, Ryan's WAF champion, right? Like Ryan is heavy. Um, Ermy's Desperini says, damn Gary, you follow arm wrestling or what? Like, yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't know everything. I certainly don't. And after this weekend, dude, like trying to keep up with all the contents, like, holy buckets, man. I'm trying to watch all the lives. It's like, holy, how am I supposed to do it? How am I supposed to like, I wanted to go check out Ingen's video on his take. Mm -hmm. of the chance in Brzezink. And I, I just, I couldn't do it. I didn't have time. Anyways, yeah. the reason I brought this up is because, you know, I kind of feel like, I mean, did I, I was really excited. I don't know if you watched the video, but I, I walked around. And I was like, Brzezink shot, Brzezink shot. And I, I got us, yeah. I got a pretty uh, varied assortment of picks, a lot of chances, but I think more, more John's. And I'm like, I personally pick John. And I feel like, I don't know. You I'm wondering, if, Ch I'm wondering if Chance feels upset that I picked somebody else. Well, I mean, it's okay to be upset, I guess. But I, I would hope that at the end of the day, we can figure it out that like, you know. It's just it's just part of the game, right? It's how hard like you you have to acknowledge it's hard to bet against John Brzezink. Yeah. Because like, am I being a hypocrite saying I want new people? I'm I want the sport to blow up, and the only way to do this is to have the new people. It's like, yes, I want that on the same token. Well, that would be betting with your heart and not with your brain. Yeah. But how do you not like I mean, I, I do have history with John Brzezink. And I would so Really, when we're getting into it, you must know that the conversation you had Neil pick up on your show, right? Yeah. Are you on Neil's show? I was. Uh, no, I think Neil was on. I was doing a, a solo show and then Neil came on the show and then you came on the show because yeah. we were talking about you. And Neil really did. He's like, hey, bro, there's a place for you. And I'm telling you this weekend, I know, but we're going to get into it, but I've got to give my little five minute take on my experience. I was really nervous when there's so many video guys mm -hmm. to go to a tournament. And it was like, it's eight. like, yeah, so when, many people. when there's so, I know that I, I have a place. I know it's like, I, I know what I can do and yada, yada, but it's like, I feel bad, you know? walking in other people's territories. He's been filming, you know, top role productions. He's been on the scene now doing his thing. And it's like, uh, I just felt unsure if there's a place for me, but that's not why I wasn't going to that particular tournament it happened to be on my 
wife's birthday. Anyways, Neil Pickup's like, hey, there's a place for you. You should do your thing. And I was like, meanwhile, you guys like the Gary edit. But on the flip side, I'm being really busy and I'm actually thinking kind of lazily. And I'm thinking, ah, live, live is so easy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Live is so easy. You know, that Gary, that's a four hour cut of footage, right? So I was just thinking I need to go there, walk around, top, ba, 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 bang. And for the crazy people who wanted to watch the whole thing, that would be for them. And then that would uh, save me from the uh, having to do an edit. Anyways, right, right. I where the work is at. Yeah, yeah. So I had John Brzezink on the show last week and uh, and with, with and Chance. And I was like, man, I just had this feeling like, what if I never, what if I never get to see John arm wrestle again, like live, never get that, that feeling, that experience of watching this man arm wrestle. The thing about John Brzezink that I don't know if everyone knows everyone, like all the newer people coming in the sport, you're kind of being uh, just told he's the goat. I promise you all these new people haven't done all the research. John Brzezink has hundreds of matches I, yeah. I know you haven't seen all of them. So you've been kind of told that he's the goat, but like what also made John Brzezink the best was that, and I was listening to Ryan Bowens. He talked about how John is just so versatile and can arm wrestle in such, such different ways. And, and again, if you watch his matches, he will test. If he's up a, a match or two, he'll go into the other. And he, yeah. And he just, he's always good for some excitement. It's just, you know, it's electrifying to watch him arm wrestle anyways i was like i told my wife i was like holy shit this is such last minute i'm like do you care if i go to this tournament and uh she's like no and uh, luckily the uh, airline prices weren't that crazy Mm -hmm. so i booked my ticket and i go there and i i didn't even bring my regular camera i was 100 percent focused on doing a live stream and I felt bad because Chance was like saying that he was going to be the exclusive live guy. Right. And I was like, I don't know if this is going to cause trouble. But again, per Artem's were Artem even said the like, hey, there's room for everyone. There's room for everyone. He said that like months ago when I had the Albert Ding issue. Right. Anyways, I show up there and I try to do the live and I just falls to shit. It's the so- Internet's garbage. Did you watch it? I, I didn't, all I saw was that there was like four different live stream things that you had posted that were like a minute to five minutes each. Yeah, it was so bad. I the, I don't know if it's good or bad that when you're doing the live stream, all the comments come up, but it was just like, bah, 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 just a beating. And I was like, oh, this has got to be bad. I've never had this bad. Now, mind you, I did run a test that said the internet was shit, but I was, mm. I was like, I'm going to try it anyways. Right, right. So anyways, I finally gave up, but I felt like, I mean, I, I was a mess, dude. I thought oh, the funny part is you go watch Artem's video. He's actually interviewing me right when I'm realizing this is all just going to go to shit. And I'm like, what am I going to do? I didn't even bring my regular camera. And then I didn't find out till later, but I bought a mic that is just shit. So the audio is crap. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I was like feeling so horrible i was like neil pickup is wrong i'm irrelevant uh, there's so many people what do i what do i have to offer i was feeling like total crap anyways i i re gathered my stuff i shut off the live stream i was like okay just film with your phone yeah you, got to, you do have the cool little gimbal that you can get some cool shots so i just tried to do my thing get the shots and uh you know I, at the end, I was like, I think I've got some cool stuff and I'm going to go home and cut a video. But the thing was, is like, I'm really shocked at how hard the, the chat was on me. Like, they were so hard, bro. Oh, my God. Well, it's like uh, people have this kind of standard that they're kind of looking for. And I've said this a million times, but people like they look and they might compare arm wrestling to like... I don't know, some sport that's similar, but like not, like a little bit further along than we are that has a little bit more stability in, in, in what they can do a little bit more money flowing into it where we're just like flying by the seat of our pants. I don't know. We're going to West Virginia. Are they going to have internet? Do they have Dude, internet in West Virginia? I, did, I, I bought know. my ticket two days earlier. 
Right. Anyways, the commenters like, how unprofessional. Why don't you have your shit together? This is unacceptable. Like, why? What kind yeah, of product? Which I like, say, what, have I'm, I'm, you I'm, ever I'm, been to an arm wrestling tournament before? Like, uh, generally speaking, shit is not together with arm wrestling. Just generally speaking. Well, once I let go of the live, I was like, okay, go do what you got to do. And it's like, dude, once the night was over what I experienced was so amazing. Like, I don't know. It was just, here's the thing. And here's why I wanted to kind of bring up this whole thing is if you'd asked me, I thought John Brzezink would have to win. I thought John Brzezink would have to win to inspire him to continue to train and do more. Ah. I thought, uh, John Brzezink losing the chance would be what could potentially be the highest risk of us not seeing him anymore. So the reason why I'm excited to have John on tonight is because I heard from multiple kind of sources that he, uh, I, I, he said, because it was so hard to be chance that maybe, you know, he's like, it shouldn't be that hard. Like that was hard work. And that now quote, what I want to ask him tonight is like, he's like, that's so hard. I don't know if I want to keep putting in that kind of effort to win arm wrestling matches, even though it results in like an amazing, euphoric, exciting experience. It's like, uh, it's very you know tough. Ryan Espy. Gary Roberts. What's up, man? I, I apologize. We are not quite, uh, we haven't talked to Uncle John about his match. I actually asked you to come on 10 minutes earlier. Do you mind if we do uncle John's stuff before we get into your take? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So anyways, long story short, that day started off as like this crazy disaster and it ended on like such a high note. And it's like a variety of emotions. I can't believe, I can't believe how Travis continues to pump out like these crazy like if I look at it historically, like he, for some reason, he's able to do this. Where he, I mean, I know it's just a random thing, John and Ch Chance setting up this match, but he has a lot of those moments. If you look at his tournaments, he's always has some, in, something interesting. And I don't know what it is about the East Coast. The crowds, they get good crowds over there. Do they, if we were to talk about West Coast, Middle and East, Am I wrong in thinking the East Coast wins crowd prize? I don't know if I have enough data from the States. Ryan, you've been around. You've seen the crowds. Oh, man. The crowd was crazy. And maybe it's just John Brzezink. If we bring John Brzezink, if everywhere we have a big tournament, we have a John Brzezink arm wrestle somebody, will we always have a crazy crowd? Maybe that's the key. It's interesting to me that you say that because I felt like John maybe wasn't getting the attention he deserved. So you saw John doing some sort of appearances on people's random YouTube channels throughout the past few years. But I felt like he was in everyone else's shadow, even being the greatest of all time because he had been out of the spotlight for a little while. So I think it was nice to see that everybody came out to see John compete again, but I think that chance had something to do with that as well. You know, it was a legit competitor for John to come in and prove how good he is. Yeah. yeah and I, it's so tough when you're like such a fan of John, it's, it's hard to talk about it and not like, I don't mean to come off as like, I'm not given chance to light. I feel like he's got this whole world ahead of him. He's going to have plenty of time for the spotlight. Right. Gary, you got to stop worrying about offending people because even when you pick somebody, if somebody gets all pissy that you didn't pick them to win, they need to get a little bit tougher. Let's face yeah. it. Uh, I agree with you. John, you had a match. Yeah, I had a couple matches. Okay, so I, I, wait, I just watched the one you just posted. It was only one guy. I had 32 matches, actually. Oh, I didn't catch the whole stream. You arm wrestled that much? Yeah, I went, I won 30 consecutive matches left-handed and I lost on the 31st match. So the match I just watched. That was the super match. Yeah, yeah. So who was, 
Oh, I'm, oh, 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 you had the, the king of the table style thing. Yeah. It was when basically it? kind of an ROTN type type of deal. When is that going to be posted? I didn't see that. Uh, you can see it on the live stream. It's the end of the live oh, stream, but I'll be oh. editing it up individually probably in the next day or two. You forgot to remind me. I, I, I Okay, well, I just watched the, uh, the super match that you posted. I saw the first match. You took the guy's hand, and I immediately thought, I want to arm wrestle this guy because it looks like I could take his hand too. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Who is this guy, and when can I arm wrestle him? <laughs> he would destroy you, Gary. Yeah? What? Unfortunately. I don't think so. I, so the guy I, I was I was arm wrestling is a guy named Nathan Guitard. He's uh, been been in the game. I don't know, maybe maybe two or three years. Big guy. I think he weighed in about two sixty. I was coming in about two fifteen ish. Um, tall guy. I pulled him last year. The last time I pulled right hand in November of last year, I pulled him in a tournament. I did beat him, but the word going around was that. He's the guy. He's the guy from New Brunswick, and he's just making gains like crazy, and nobody can do anything to him. Nobody can touch this guy. He's really? so strong. And so he asked me for a match, and I was going to be going to Newfoundland anyways. So I said, sure, why not? Well, we'll put the right hand up there. And, uh, yeah, so it worked out as best of seven. I won the first match. Uh, the second match, I got a little – a little cocky. I thought that the wrist was really quite yeah. easy to take the first match. So I didn't bother to go into a ref's grip at all. I just let him kind of hit and I thought he would buckle his own wrist. Eh, I tried to flop out. They call the match. Uh, so you live and learn. And then I won the next three in a row. But there were there were some good matches in there. I almost was thinking you gave up the second one because the first one was so easy. I was th- kind of thinking that. Well, I didn't, I, I tried real hard once I realized, but, but it was too late. I, I, I didn't do what I needed to do on the gut, on the top, uh, you know, right off, right out of the gate. So it was too, a little too late. Uh, I, I took a screenshot of my favorite moment that I'm going to share with myself here. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, I mean, that from watching that, that was an impressive performance. I didn't, I didn't realize you could also then take it up a notch and do like a king of the table and squash all peeps. So you really are getting pretty good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, I mean, you know, it's like, I'm not, I'm not training two to three times a day for nothing. Right. Like, yeah. like, uh, left-handed at 200 pounds, like this, this next year is going to be pretty, pretty uh big for me i think once we can start moving around a little bit more i'm gonna start running and gunning for some different uh some 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 different 200 pounders at the top of the left hand list do you see the screenshot yeah that's a good one that's that's right before you said stand up yeah you you finally got a little vocal which i appreciated yeah i enjoyed that that yeah that was a good it was a good moment he was uh real strong to the side uh, but I think, you know, this is one of the things that a lot of people don't understand. And a lot of people will, um, you know, ask me for matches because there will be guys who get a hold of me on a practice table and they'll beat me up pretty good. Like I'm not a very good practice table puller. I get pinned a lot. I'm not very good in a slow pull. The problem is I will not give you what I give you in practice in a real match. And it is a very, yeah. very, very different situation. And you will feel violated because my hand <laughs> is going to violate your hand. And that is all there is to it. You know what my takeaway from that match is regarding rules? Hmm. Is that it seems to me like elbow fouls and losing positions sh- shouldn't be called. Like this guy elbow fouled <laughs> while he was losing like, why don't they just let you pin him? It's like, it's going to be a win. Well, you know, it's it's kind of a strategy element too. You know, it's a, it's a stra- it's basically a strategy element that can that can help out the, the weaker man, I guess, the man who's yeah. losing the match. You know, you dump your elbow. I don't think he intentionally elbow fouled on any of those things. I think he was just trying to, trying to hold on. So uh, let's, since John will be coming on, we have to kind of move on a little bit. Mm-hmm. I don't, I want to tease a little bit, but both you, you, Uncle John and Ryan Espy, you guys have a, the invite to Arm Wars. We're, the, we're going to tease a yeah. little, we'll get into a little bit, but that, that's pretty cool, man. Yeah, it is. I'm it's pumped. like, uh, you know, Neil Pickup 
God, he we love him. What he does, like everyone respects what he does. Arm Wars has like a what's the opposite of stigma? Has it has a yes, it's got a positive it's, positive it's a, light on it. You know, over. it has an aura like ah, oh, you know, it's like ooh, you know, that's cool to be invited. And I I don't know if you caught it, Ryan, but I was like I was thinking about your four way, and I was like, so you're the favorite, right? You're the guy. It depends. I heard what you said. And it depends who you, where you're asking the question. Where are you asking the question? I mean, just sitting on the worldwide stage. That question, you know, do I believe I'm the favorite? Um, I have the confidence to say yes. Of course, I believe I'm the favorite. I wouldn't go in if I didn't think I could win. In my eyes, I am. In the public eyes and the arm wrestling community at large, probably Kurdecha is the favorite overall yeah and i don't know i don't know him that well so i'm not even <laughs> sure about that i kind of i'm thinking that among you three guys i feel like you're the veteran right well, of the whole group ask i mean yeah chance's last video he said i've never beat anybody and my <laughs> biggest match was aiello five years ago and i'm trying to stay relevant Oh, oh, there's some there's some talky talky. Okay, okay, we'll get into that. Okay, wait, 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 wait. okay, but so first, Uncle John, can you describe to me your thoughts on this uh, whole John Brzezink Chance Shaw experience? Well, I thought it was awesome, uh, one way or the other. I I really enjoyed. I I enjoyed the build up. Uh, I enjoyed the match. Um, I thought that uh, Chance did pretty well uh for for what it is to go against john brzink i think it told us a lot of a big interesting story about exactly where john brzink is uh which is you know phenomenal as as usual um and i think it was really good for arm wrestling uh to have a big event where clearly west virginia is is over the, the pandemic for the most part, it looks like <laughs> there was yeah, a lot of people. Nobody was there. worried about the, nobody. Yeah. They weren't worried about, about it. They're, nobody's they're talking about the that. pandemic down in West Virginia. <laughs> no, they're, they're moving on, but it was really good. And it was like the, it was like the whole community, even online was really coming together to watch something kind of special being John coming back, but also a defining moment, although a loss, a still a defining moment for, for Chance Shaw. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm always like writing stories. You know, I'm a movie maker. I'm telling, I'm writing stories and I can't, I take things and I'm like, Chance, I know you didn't want to lose, but I, I just feel like this is better for the story. The better yeah. for you, like... Like it, this was John's moment right here. Like, I don't know. It just feels like it was perfect the way it happened. Mr. Espy, what do you say? I kind of agree with that. <clears throat> it is better for the story and the narrative. And it was interesting. If you consider all facts that have been presented to us and all opinions that have been presented to us, you think back to Derek Smith's video where he talks about the last thing to go in an arm wrestler is their hand. And then you saw John be incredibly successful and a lot of people said that Chance was controlling John's hand because he had his wrist bent back. I didn't believe that was the case a little bit. I think John controlled that entire match with his hand. But the one time you saw John, and I rewatched it, and I originally thought that Chan, or John was just out of position. But from a different angle, you can see that John is trying to get Chance low and force a hook. And oh, wait, wait. which do you remember which uh, video or angle? gave you that i don't recall which one it was but i saw it today. there's 45 <laughs> angles <laughs> which one no, just there kidding. was one that showed pretty clearly that john was gripping low and it looked like he was trying to force a hook and he wasn't gripping low on the first match no mm. and wonder... then when uh when he elbow fouled he had control match number two john gets some confidence tries to grip him low in my opinion this is what happened chance is too high gets too much and kind of crushes john through his arm not through his hand mm. and then you go on you see john just kind of follow the one successful lane but that's john berzink he tests other lanes all the time yeah in the 
in the back when I followed John back there. I'm not sure if you watched the video, but he did say, it. "Dude, I tried. I tried to hook it. <laughs> it wasn't going there. Like he was. He was good. He was good. So you know, props to uh, yeah, Miss, Mr. Chance. I do have. I wrote down some notes here. I'd like to ask you guys about it. In my interview with John Brzezink, he says he absolutely. He totally. I didn't realize I've been around the sport for a long time and I've heard this buckle versus no buckle. That's like, is it really that definitive? And John was like, yes, it absolutely is that definitive. I don't want the buckle. <laughs> and I'm like, go, why? go back to Gary, go back to John Berzink versus Matt mask at UAL nine. Every single time that Matt was going to have the buckle, John went for the slip. Really? Yes. So it was a hundred percent like trying to game that position, that uh, moment to make sure I that was, I was there in person. I think Evan was, is in the chat. He was there in person every second start, which was on a certain side of the table. John ended up in a strap very intentionally. Why can't John do that same thing when he has the buckle? Because it is just an iota of a disadvantage. It's when you used to do the hustle strap, it was major because the line of pull was different. But even when someone's pulling your hand under like this, they're almost supinating you when they tighten up that strap. And every fraction of an inch you get higher on the other side gives you an advantage. And I think that's the perfect example right there, Ryan, because that's that's where it, it starts and stops. That's all you need. The strap, if you have the buckle, your hand is, you have to fight being supinated. If you're on the other side, you get help pronating, right? Yes. When it's, that's it right there. Now, I know that there's lots of data out there that says, you know, it doesn't matter in the long run, but for me, mentally, I always want to be this because this is what I'm always trying to do. It is shocking to me that only recently has there been discussion on reevaluating the whole strap. I didn't realize it was really that. Like if you're John Brzink, shouldn't you be? I would think of all the people who could say, I don't need to worry about the buckle, that it would be John Brzink. It's like strange to me that even John Brzink. But that's not John. Right. He is technical and efficient. Wow. John is good because he knows all these things. He knows he knows the odds. He knows what he needs to do when he needs to do it. So also, Tim they also agreed to all for the first four matches going to the strap. Yeah. So in this case, it didn't really matter. So I there's one section I cut out of the video I posted. I asked Travis, in fact, you you watch Paul Lynn's take. You can hear during one of the matches when they're putting on the strap. You can hear me talking to Travis, and he's absolutely calling me an idiot for asking him this question. Would this outcome be any different if they started under traditional grip to slip then the strap? And he was like, you're an idiot. Of course, it goes to the straps. And I'm like, really? Not one, not if they arm wrestled under traditional rules, there wouldn't have been a one pin out of a strap. Not with the way Chance arm wrestles. Probably you're, talking, you're still talking about Chance and John, right? Yeah. It's very tough. It's very hard from what I've observed to hold Chance in position without, you know, trying to keep him at center. It's almost like the only way to contain that hand outside of the strap is to follow him all the way across to his side of the table, which is a bit of a kamikaze mission when you're doing that. Like it's, you're probably better off to just go to the strap. But listening to Chan Shaw's uh, recap driving home, <clears throat> I only caught the first 45 minutes, but in that of a two and a half hour stream, but in that first 45 minutes, he says that if he were to have a rematch, he wouldn't do the same thing. He wouldn't do all straps. So that. But why? <laughs> Did I, he say why? He didn't. He just said, I am, I would like the rematch. And probably what I would do different is traditional, traditional set. 
Well, maybe that's one thing in a long list of things that 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 would need to be done at this point, because maybe John Brzezink has the got a little bit of fire. He looked pretty excited. He looked pretty excited and, and ramped up. And I wonder if he gets a little taste of the adrenaline. He's going to want some more now. He's going to go. He's going to go hard and give us one more real, real hard run. We got a super chat, by the way, from Ermes Desperini. Says Gary King of the women arm wrestlers, Robert. Crush all ladies, crush all ladies. I'm telling you, we can make a whole series, line all of them up, It'd go viral. Me I like handling. <laughs> I mean, listen, it's comedic purposes for all you people out there who don't get the joke. Uh, just trying to make viral content. Gary Roberts challenging all the world champion ladies out there in the world. Now, hey. Ryan, I heard in your one of your last videos, you were talking about issues between the UK and Canada, and I hadn't read up about that. What was is there not we're not greenlit for the UK at this point? Nope, we're not. Um, the UK is open travel to all of Europe, basically, and the United States. So and we just don't have a high enough vaccine rate or something yet. Uh, I don't know what it is. They haven't really commented or said why that is. Maybe we're just not important enough in the grand global trading scheme. But, Maybe. You know, a lot of time, there's two months between now and the match. So right. that's a lot of time. It should be fine. Yeah. Manitoba is mask free as of Saturday. This is crazy right. that you guys are still talking about perhaps being shut down from going to leaving the country. Like, no, yeah. I'm going to Switzerland September 15th to go visit uh, Caroline's family over there. It's like, I'm going to be in dude. Texas in two weeks. Yeah. How's the, how's the process for that? Is it, do you have to do a lot of stuff now? One negative COVID test within 72 hours of flying and yeah. that's it. What's yeah. going down in Texas? A work conference, but I'm going to see if I can get together with the guys down there for a practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it. Content. Content. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another thing uh, I, man, dude, I watched every angle that I could of John Brzezink and Shanshaw's first match, and I in nowhere could find the elbow foul. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I. <laughs> well, here's the thing. The reason I mentioned this is because Chance saw in his stream, he said, hey, man, uh, if there was an elbow foul, why didn't you stop the match? That little bit of energy could have made the difference. Like, I'm not saying it would have, but it annoys me that could have. If you made me arm wrestle for five more what, seconds. What rule set are we under here? They said they were under their own set of rules <laughs> like so there was they, it looked to me was like a running foul. foul i mean you got bartwood refereeing the match yeah yeah but listen i so chance shaw in his stream he said bart told him that the down ref nitro was the one who called the round running foul but bart couldn't hear him mention it and so then he was only told after the match. But if you just for shits and giggles, if you watch that match and you watch Nitro, he doesn't even flinch. He doesn't do anything. He, he called it after the pin. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. like. So I just I find it. What? Why are you? Why are you? Why are you shaking? What, Uncle John? What's your thoughts? No, I'm just saying. I don't know. I I looked through it briefly and I didn't see an elbow foul either. But it's just like yeah. Ref's going to fuck up. That's what a ref do. Yeah. I I just, for fun, I was like, was there some sort of conspiracy where, like, they were going to try to... I mean, in the grand it. scheme of things, it really changes nothing at the end of the day. I mean... I mean, it's... Such, gave Chance his one win. Yeah. It does It does give Chance his, his win. I don't want to get too comfortable. We're, we're on a talk show trying to create content. That is my entire purpose, is sound, uh, creating things to talk about. I just thought it was interesting because when I asked him Talmadge on video, I said, was there an elbow foul? And he goes like this, like that high. And I was <laughs> like, okay, well, he confirms it was that high. And I watched, I didn't, I, I couldn't find that one. Anyways, uh, I, uh, watching Paul Lynn's breakdown, he says, seemed like John Brzezink, 
I think it was him or somebody in the chat. Oh, maybe it was a super chat saying, what do you think about all the cheating John Brzezink was doing on match one? And I was like, what? was John Brzezink cheating in the setup to try to blah, blah, blah? What does cheating in the setup mean? Yeah, I don't know. That's that's not he, a thing. I think Paul Lynn kind of somewhat agreed that there was a little bit of a, a taking advantage of one's historical knowledge in the history in the arm wrestling over the new guy. So John yeah. has dumb himself down to match the experience level of the guy he's arm wrestling? Kidding me? <laughs> well, 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 that's what I'm asking you. Is it, When I watch it, I don't see that happening. So I'm asking you to explain it to the, the, the novice. I didn't see what John was he do doing anything that I wouldn't have expected him to do. Right. But what, like, I, I think Chance said John was commanding the energy, like, the narrative yeah. of the whole what the, what am i what are we supposed to say about that stop commanding the energy john brzink uh, you oh you yeah you gotta take the john brzink out of you a little bit here <laughs> like well, I, don't, I don't understand what he's saying well that's why right. the energy and commanding the setup i mean yeah and travis used to be a master of that and that's why most guys that went up to arm wrestle against him were defeated before they even the referee even said go. There seems to be this new idea that arm wrestling should be two guys that just walk up to the table and they grab each other's hands regardless of how they come together and the stronger man just pushes the other guy over. I'm sorry, but that's not what arm, modern arm wrestling is. It, it just isn't. And if you aren't willing to accept the fact that you need to learn those, those tricks and those cheats and those manipulations in the setup, then you probably won't succeed. You won't go all that far. Uh, I'm, I'm going to see if I could bring up the, the match actually, but uh, when uh, some of the camera angles were at a high enough angle that you could see right after the go, you could see kind of their finger placements. And it, I mean, to me, the grip looked fair. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not sure I get the whole uh, cheating. The grip is fair, Gary. I mean, if he thinks that's cheating, he should try arm wrestling in the World Arm Wrestling League. <laughs> hey, we got a question for Ryan from Justin Cyrillic, $5 Super Chat. He says, Ryan, you said you have more confidence after watching the match with John and Chance. Why is that? Because everything that I intended to do was affirmed by the path that John took. So I have certain attributes that he probably hasn't seen before. Mm -hmm. And he'll see those very quickly in match number one. Excellent. And hey, if Chance manages to beat me, then hats off to him. But I don't think he's there yet. John Brzezink, can you hear us? I do. Yeah, I just signed in. What's going on, man? What's up, man? Not a whole lot. I are you? Hold on. Let's just let's just say something here first, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, <laughs> the reigning, defending goat. John, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, dad, defend my goat position, huh? All right, that's cool. <laughs> I am. I'm sorry, John. I'm, I'm terrible at the intros. Travis, get you know, Travis really does good at that. I, yeah, I know. He's. I think it's always his experience doing the, the you know Cooper Tire and the CrossFit and all that expo yeah. stuff. Let me tell you guys something about John Brzezink. This man's going. It goes into retirement. <laughs> never wants to come on my show. <laughs> Over on my YouTube channel, I have uh, to actually wait for him to come out of retirement and come on Arm TV for me to be on the same show as him. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't have anything to talk about though. It wasn't, it wasn't nothing personal, Ryan. I just was like, when I'm <laughs> when I was done with the sport, I'm done with the sport. I didn't want to, you know, I don't stay in contact. I really am out of out of touch with even who's arm wrestling anymore, and just wanted to completely avoid it. So I'm sorry, sorry about that. But um, I. I accept your apology, John. There was no <laughs> apology necessary. Um, the last time I saw you, we were in Moldova doing a whole bunch of things. and oh, That's uh, right. Uh, you guys were in Moldova together. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, John Brzezink, 
my man, my my partner over there, Uncle John, says he has never actually spoken to you. So I would like you to introduce Uncle John Thompson. This is oh. John Brzezink. Pleasure to nice meet to, you. Nice to meet you, John. Yeah, I have. I've, uh, since we last discussed going on the show, I've watched a couple of your shows, and you do quite well at the, uh, the interviewing. So thank you, thank you. Cheers. I appreciate that. Yeah. So John Brzezink, I don't want to take up a ton of your time tonight. I. I I thought going into this that to encourage John Brzezink to get out and play more, I use the playground reference that you would have to win to be, to want to play more and that losing the chance Shaw would cause you maybe to go back into retirement. But then I heard, I heard these words from a few sources. John said, basically, man, that was hard work. <laughs> That's a lot of hard work. And I don't know if I'm <laughs> ready to continue to work hard and, you know, maybe, maybe I don't want to do this. So it's yeah, like, well, it the had the opposite. Just, yeah, no, well, the problem is just, just, there's no, for me at, in my position and age, and um, there's just not very many in my mind, very many good matches for me anymore. I mean, I've been there, done that. Um, all the guys that are still really good are, are good. And um, this just was just special. I mean, I chance was kind of the up and coming and a big wild card and um, an unknown and, um, just all the hype and excitement and stuff that he was doing and people that he was beating. And I felt like I was going to still be competitive. So this was kind of just a one time deal just because of a very unique situation. Um, I mean, honestly, I don't really know or who or what I would do from, from here. I mean, I, I don't know, you know, I don't, I don't have any have... desire to climb the ladder again. I mean, that's craziness. So um, yeah. Yeah. Couldn't we just keep doing this? Every guy we think is almost elite, we just have him show up at John's door. We have the big. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna always be open for stuff like that. You know, who's, you know, I've already considered. Um, I've been approached by uh, um, Michael Todd uh, about Corey West, and that that interests me. So I mean, like I said on your show, that's probably the only other guy right now that I would probably be like, yeah, yeah, no, I would like to, you know, have a a straight up match with him. And there's conflicting uh, word on the street about whether you're in the, the top eight or out emotionally. Like, well, uh, I don't think, yeah, I don't even know if it's up to me. I mean, it's, it's up to this situation, the COVID and the lack of sponsors and just the whole shit show that's been happening this last year and a half. So I know I wrote uh, Krill yesterday and said, basically, you know, I, I understand the situation and how things are kind of still up in the air and uncertain and, um, I get, you guys are obviously struggling to get the sponsors that you, you wanted and needed to, to do the show that you talked about a year and a half, two years ago in China. And um, I'm, I'm just, I'm just tired of thinking that it's going to happen or not going to happen and being strung along. So I pretty much said, I'm kind of out. There's, there's too many guys that are um, in a better position and more and actually more capable than myself to, to be uh, doing that. So um, I kind of so told myself, told him that I was, I was out. So unless they really sweeten the deal or, or reassure me that things are on, you know, on schedule to be actually a, a, a go and not just he's one off. And then we wait another year before round two and two more years for round three. Yeah. <laughs> but I can't, I can't be 60 ish when round three comes around. So I just, it's. So I think it, it's, best. it's more situational and less to do with the actual quote, hard work that was beating chance Shaw. Um, you know, say like for, for, for chance, it was just, uh, like I said, it was just an exciting thing and just kind of a spur of the moment because, um, the way he approached me in January and then again in April about doing a super match and, um, I, st I pretty much told him no, no way, no way. Cause I hadn't been doing anything, no pulling at all, zero. And then, um, just getting started back up and going out to Travis's and just everything just kind of fell in place. And, you know, I got caught up in all his, his hype and his, uh, his Facebook stuff and his uh, YouTube channel. And um, it made me think ah, this, you know, what could it hurt? What's, you know, yeah. so. well, I, to just to be more specific, had you beat chance like easier, like you said, if it wasn't so hard work, would you have been more motivated to chase the top eight and make that happen? No, no, I, you know, no, I'm no, I'm not. Yeah. I, I, I've always known in my heart, in my mind, that the top eight was um, at this point in my life is out of my is probably out of my league. I mean, I was I was hopeful that I would w win one round, the first round, and even that's kind of 
um, weighs on me. Like, I don't even know if I can get through the first round with David. So, uh, but yeah, I agreed to it just because of the fact that it was going to be all the guys together at, you know, each particular round, it was going to be like at a vacation and it was going to pay fairly well. And I thought, nah, why not one last little tour? I mean, I think the arm wrestling community would be 100% okay with you doing more stuff like that just happened this week. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, no, that works be- better, better for me anyway. I mean, yeah. it's definitely, definitely more fun. Uh, when, when you feel the, when the crowd is lighting up like that and you're feeling the, the, the champion feelings, does that make yeah, you hungry? No. You're like, oh, I wow. Could- yeah, no, it was very, um, enjoyable. It, this Travis's tournament was probably the closest I felt to being like a legit, uh, fighter, like a UFC fighter. I mean, it was just, the, you know, I, we, obviously the crowd was a hundredth of what, what there would be at a UFC fight, but the energy and when there was the roaring and the cheering, it was, um, it definitely, uh, you could definitely feel it. It was, it was probably one of the m- more exciting, um, events I've, I've been to even comparable, almost even to Zlati when I beat Dennis, you know, that type of energy. Um, going through some of the chat and, uh, chances own, he says, did John Brzezink make a rule up with this whole, it doesn't matter about your thumb. Only if the knuckles are, <laughs> <laughs> it, they, I, I read all this talk about all this knuckle thumb stuff. None of it mattered. We all we went to the ref script every single match. So I mean, to to pretend like I did something cheating and didn't give him a fair grip or or made him struggle through the thirty seconds before the ref script. I mean, I <laughs> I just don't know what to say. Um, yeah, I mean. <laughs> My, my, yeah, my argument was that I can't grab so low so to show to let your thumb knuckle show if you've got a tiny thumb and you pull your thumb out and, cr- and, and you know, run it like this into the crotch of my thumb. I mean, that's the old day patent thing, you know, leave a gap in the hand and run the thumb basically out and then complain to the refs. I got to see my thumb. Let me, see, let me see my thumb. I mean, it's, 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 um, yeah, it might be a rule, but it's, uh, it's a ridiculous uh, loophole to get people to cry and bitch to get people lower on the their opponent's hand. I mean, was he actually sucking his thumb in, trying to hide it a little bit? Um, I don't know if he was doing that, but um, he does have a quite a bit smaller thumb than I do. So, um, yes, I'm sorry, but I mean, our our knuckles were even. In fact, if you watch most of the matches on the setup after the referee's grip. Uh, or or what he's trying to basically get a grip. You can see his knuckles are almost, you know, perpendicular straight up and down in the air where my hand is quite a bit lower than his. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. I mean, can you see the match we're playing the first match? You, your, your knuckles seem very, well, I mean, the grip seem every, very even. Well, like I said, like I said before, every single match was started with a referee's grip. So, I mean, we can't really even argue the fact of, of, of um, the conspiracy theory of, I was manipulating the <laughs> the position and, and doing all these trick this trickery for for the hand grip because it was basically Bart close your thumbs close your hand and that was that was that so and I think every every single match was ref grip so and did you have you watched back the video oh yeah I've watched all the different angles of the videos because I, I I keep thinking to myself where did I you know the big elbow foul controversy <laughs> that's <laughs> I mean it, I, I I have to tell Chance I. Chance, rewind your own podcast when we discuss the rules about elbows and how um, there was not going to be um, any running fouls unless unless the elbow was so flagrant um, that it was huge. Um, that and then we would stop the match. I mean, we both agreed on that. I mean, even uh, his buddy Kyle said, "Oh yeah, I'll make sure. I'll make sure." And then and then this all came up, um, and after the match is over. The, the referees are yelling and other people are yelling and they're looking at each other. And all of a sudden there's a, you know, these elbow fouls. I'm like, okay, well, I, I guess our discussion didn't mean anything because I thought it was no foul unless it was flagrant enough to stop the match. And, um, but obviously we forgot about what we agreed on, but uh, it was all, it's all, it was all okay. I mean, I, I was just surprised at the fact, and I'm, I'm, I'm the same as he is and thinking that, boy, I sure, sure wish I would have known um, that 
uh, I elbow fought and I, I, you know, I honestly wish I would have stopped the match because um, I would have liked to have, I put a lot of energy into that first match being on the, the wrong side of the straps. And uh, yeah, that's, that led me to try to hook the second match. Um, oh, well, the second time of the first match. And because uh, my hand was just so fatigued and just so numb that I just thought I can't, I can't do what I just did. <laughs> so I thought perfect time to try to maybe get it wrist to wrist, but uh, there just wasn't any hand and forearm left to even uh, begin to try to uh, control a hook. Uh, but we talked beforehand and you again expressed how you, you, you do not like having the buckle. Did you notice that the buckle played a role or not? Oh matches. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely did. I mean, it absolutely did. And, um, that was another thing. I just, um, you know, I weighed the, the, whether I should try to get the buckle or, you know, we, we thought maybe we would flip for it, but I was, I was, uh, confident enough that I told chance, I said, well, I'll let you decide what, what do you want to do? You want to have the good side of the first match? And, um, he said, yeah, I want the good side of the first match. So I thought, okay, well, it's going to be all or nothing. I'm going to, I'm going to try my best the, the first match being on the bad side. And if I, if I can get that match, then I'll, then I'll be able to cruise. But um, yeah, I knew, I knew going into the first match that it was going to be tricky, <laughs> uh, especially with someone as good as a top roller as chances. I mean, it's, um, it's one thing to fight when you're, you know, on the good side, but when you're on the bad side, you almost, you almost inevitably get your hand in a, in a, in a kind of a weird position, especially with the kind of back pressure that uh, Chance can apply. Uh, Chance says he would like a rematch. Is that something you would consider? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, why do a, not? Do a, do a GoFundMe. I mean, I can be easily bought. I'll, I'll do it next <laughs> week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah a month, a week, two months. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Just when you, when you get the funds, give me a call. I'll, I'll show up wherever you want me to. I love it. I love it. Um, uh, because honestly, yeah, because honestly, I feel like I went into that match with a lot of extra pressure, and I I felt, and maybe it was Chance's strength that that did it to me, but um, I pulled like an idiot. I mean, I just I I walked away from that thinking, boy, you really you really tried really way harder than you should have, and because of that, you didn't have any any of your typical relaxed control. I just felt like I was from the go i went red line and just stupid just side pressure <laughs> so it was, very, it was very frustrating to me even after the match thinking wow that that was a lot of work for you know i oh. I, and I, I typically i typically don't go into a match like that just just you know crazy crazy pressure and crazy craziness just aggressive and and putting myself in just or you know having myself be put in that position i mean that's where more. like a that's where like a good corner man, like a Bob Brown would no, come in. No, Bob Brown. <laughs> what? Uh, no. <laughs> He's uh, not good. That's funny. <laughs> what? I thought he was uh, yeah. good. Uh, I'd rather... <laughs> no. Um, you know, I just know from my, my own experience that I arm wrestle better when I'm much more relaxed and controlled and thinking and, and calm. And, and um, like the last match, I finally ended up doing some of the things that I normally would do, like, you know, giving up a little bit of the arm position to get the wrist back and, you know, position. Um, but the first two, three matches, it was, it was, I was just so scared that I was doing just red line right from the get go with it, with a straight wrist and just uh, side pressure. I was, um, I guess, just so nervous of doing anything or getting out of position you know, or doing anything wrong that I, I felt like anyway that I did, that I, I arm muscle kind of crazy. Ryan Espy said that in the that second match that he saw you trying to grip low, like you were going to go inside. Was that yeah. intentional? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, like I said, after the first match in the elbow fall, I thought, oh, I, I don't want that to happen again. And I, when I came out of the strap after that first match, my my hand was absolutely just completely numb, um, and I just thought, oh, I don't know. I just I just second guessed myself. Like I got to do something different. I just can't. I don't know if I can go go, go through that again. So. Um, but it was a huge mistake to try to hook when I have, you have no, no form and no hand. I mean, I had no control to even try to try to, you know, get the hook in. Do you guys I mean, have I, actually, I think I actually did kind of get it wrist to wrist, but there was just no hand to even, you know, hold on to it. <laughs> uh, Ryan, uh, uncle John, you guys got any questions for my man, Mr. Brzezink? Yeah. I'm doing a lot of talking. You guys I need to ask some questions. I was yielding the floor to Mr. Brzezink. <laughs> How's it going, Ryan? 
I'm doing really well, man. Thank you. Good, good. I got a question for you, John. Uh-huh. Uh, Gary got uh, a soundbite from you talking about uh, chances potential against a guy like Jerry Cataret. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you do you think that's a good match? And are there any other good matches that you see for Chance where he should go next in your opinion? I, I do think. Well, I mean, Chance has some experience with Jerry, even if it was a wore out Jerry. Um, I think Chance's move is going to put Jerry out of position. Um, what I told chances he possibly might need to develop a transition from his offensive position if he can't finish jerry to uh, shoulder roll if he can feel comfortable doing that um yeah i really i really truly believe that chance will take jerry to his side of the table and jerry will have to uh, have to j- typically do with a broken wrist jam like he he's been known to do uh, can chance make that transition especially if he's on the defensive side a little bit, that's something that he's going to have to develop. But I, I think, I think possibly chance. Um, well, yeah, chance would probably have a better, no, I shouldn't even say that. I, I don't know if I would have a shot against Jerry right now. Jerry's Jerry might even be a, just a different animal, but no, I, I, I believe chance is you know, right up there with, uh, with uh, Jerry for sure. Wow. So. Uh, We've missed a lot of super chats, you guys. We will come back to you. We promise. Uh, obviously, a special moment having uh, Mister uh, the the goat on here. Uh, I do have. Oh, Travis! I asked Travis. I said, "What would have been different if they had disregarded this uh, all straps matches and they just started like." normal and had some slips and he's like every every everyone would be a strap and i'm like really like is that true i don't know i i guess it just depends on the mindset of of uh chance because I, I i i feel like i arm wrestle a lot better if someone is honestly trying to get a grip um and then we can test the hits with the hand strength and i mean with the straps especially with chance it i really did feel immobilized i mean as much hand pressure and as much cupping as I was trying to apply to get that wrist advantage on him, the hand advantage, it just was not happening. That strap is uh, with that kind of back pressure, just, just locks it flat. (laughs) So it really makes it difficult to get any kind of uh, flex at all in your, in your hand. Um, And I know, I know that to be true because, you know, guys that I arm wrestle that are really good in the straps, you know, can, can do that to me. I mean, um, even just pulling with Ryan, the, the, the lighter version of Ryan, um, this night and night and day pulling him out of the straps versus in the straps. Uh, thank you very much. Do you mind if we do some super chats? Uh, no, go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm looking forward to these, Gary. Ermes Desperini says, Gary King of the Women Arm Wrestlers Roberts. John, do you think there's any credibility to my statement that I could beat any woman champion? Arm wrestler in the world, Hermes Gasparini, Desperini, Desperini. So I don't know who Desperini is. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. They, these are troll <laughs> names. These are troll, troll names. names. Right, so, but I, I said I could beat all women arm wrestlers. Oh, you could beat? No, there's just no way. There's no way, Gary. <laughs> Gary there's absolutely that. no way. There's what? no chance that you can. You have, you, you have no chance. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the first name that comes to mind. Sarah, maybe. No, Sarah would crush you too. But um, no, there's a half a dozen women out there. Maybe even a dozen women that would <laughs> hand, you, hand you your ass, Gary. <laughs> uh, Justin Surrealik, he says, Ryan, you said you have more confidence after watching the match with John and Chance. Why you is read that, that one already, Gary. Oh, okay. <laughs> my bad, my bad, my bad. JC, John Merzink has a strong hand and wrist. Uh, John, does that no matter when you say like I'm getting old and I'm retired, I'm, is that something that arm wrestlers like yourselves have been around, you know, for a hundred years, you will always have a strong hand and wrist, even if you're not really arm wrestling. Like, is it just forever? Um, You'll die with a strong. No, hand I mean, it's no, no, no. Yeah. I mean, it's strong. And I, it's, I seem to be getting a little larger as I get older, but it, it, it definitely doesn't. Um, it doesn't have the power in the snap and the, 
and the reflex that it used to. I mean, I, I, I can remember always feeling super confident of being able to, to get the go and, and control um, just with that, that quick reflex uh, uh, of power. And now I almost feel like I'm, I protect and I'm going to a defensive mode and, 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 and wait for someone to hit then, then have that offensive, that offensive power. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm, my hand's strong, but it, it, the confidence isn't there like it used to be when it was real crisp. I have kind of a, the index finger kind of has a, a little bit of arthritis and everything else seems to be moving at a little bit of a slower pace. Well, what I love about what has just happened here is that even if you were to have a rematch this ne- week from what you were saying, your confidence level is higher. You'd go in oh, a I, little more. No, I, I always do. Well, I, I always seem to do better when I've had more experience against somebody, my confidence level increases. I know what I can and can't do and what to avoid. And if I, if I get a weekend to, to train with chance, then, then chance is going to probably, it's going to take a year or two for chance to have a super match with me. I, I believe like I would, like, I think I would really be able to know and have a lot more confidence in all the, all the areas that I would, Oh, would like oh to see have. this. This <laughs> is something I don't really get. So, like, you're saying just hanging out with Chance for a weekend, oh, yeah. you would no, get okay. all the tools to be like, oh, I own him for two years. Or I just, I would just know what I could and couldn't do. Yeah, and it would, it would put my mind at at ease, and I, I would, I would approach a match much more uh, confident and relaxed. And I, I think I'm more effective when I'm like that. Like I said, this match. Uh, this weekend was um, a lot of extra pressure just because of the arm bets thing. And I was just out of my mind doing red line, like just, <laughs> yeah. And I, I typically don't do that. And can the average someone like chance awesome, but still young, they, you, you're, you're still too new to be able to uh, digest an opponent that quickly. If, let's say what you can do. No, I mean, I, 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 I was doing that at his age. I was, I, I was always trying to figure out my opponents. I mean, I, I would love to, you know, to go live with Dave Patton or Johnny Walker or hang out with whoever my tough competition was to, to get in their head, just to know them, to feel more at ease being around them, just know them personally. And, and yeah, if they would, if they would spend time with me on the practice table, I, I always felt like I walked away with the, the edge, the upper edge. So it's interesting because I watched Chance live stream. He seems eager for a rematch, thinking that he mm-hmm. would now know what to do. But uh-huh. you're saying the same thing. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think, I think yeah. we're gonna have to test this out. Theory, theory needs to be tested. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Caroline, Carolyn Loomis, Mr. Espy, do you support I think that's up in Chance's uh, mother or something? What? <laughs> she has a lot of negative things to say about me in others in other channels. Yeah. Yeah, oh, she's. Do you support, I know the question, but go su- ahead and read it. Do you support up and comers in arm wrestling? I don't know how you quantify that. Does having a practice every week and training young guys week in, week out for the past 25 years constitute supporting up and coming arm wrestlers? I, I don't I, know. Sure. I'm not Carolyn, sure I understand the question. <laughs> I, I think Ryan supports up and comers. White Wolf says, thanks, John, for the arm bet winnings. Your calmness under pressure in your matches over the years is uncanny. Do you meditate? How do you do it? Mm, I don't meditate. Not purposefully, anyway. So Vaughn says it's just kind of natural to me that I'm, I'm always walking around with a blank mind. So, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I don't ever try to overthink things. I try to go into things kind of with an open, just a – an open mind and just have things go where they go. But um, yeah, no, I didn't, I wasn't calm this last weekend for sure. If you, if you watch me, I'm, I'm, I'm in a panic mode for most of the, most of the match. I almost, I'm, I almost feel like I didn't, I don't even remember some of the, the things that I should remember on the setups and stuff. I was so. <laughs> it's good for so TV though. It. Yeah. It's good for TV. Panic John Brzink makes good television. Yeah. He, if you if there's anybody in the chat that wants to see John Berzink in a very impressively calm state, go to Arm Sport Videos and look up Super Bras Defer 1991 in your match against um, Big Daddy. 
Ooh, oh, Gary. Literally screaming in your face and you have nothing. <laughs> have nothing. I was wow. like, hearing me from 30 years ago and you were just yeah. looking them down. That's yeah. a recall. Yeah. yeah. I love wow. that tournament. That's an amazing tournament. Yeah. Ozzy Arm Wrestler says, great win, John. Four absolute studs on the screen. Bang. Ready, bang. I think I'm caught up. Was that it? I think so. Uh, John, I told you I wouldn't keep you all night. We have a right. four-way. Ryan Espy, Chance Shaw, Derek Smith, Alex Kurdecha. Is that how you say his name? Yes, and Chance is pulling Ryan first. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, Chance, the, the tall guys are going to be the, the problem, right? But the, one of them is going to knock the other one out. I, I'm, I'm going to guess that Kradesha beats Derek. So whoever survives the cleanest out of the Ryan-Chance match, um, I'm going to pick to win it, but we'll see. It's a very kind and <laughs> position that you just picked. Yeah. There. <laughs> I can't, I just can't see Derek. I mean, I, I, it's been a year since I pulled with Derek, but I think, and I know he's, he's tough up top, but I think uh, Kredesha will, well, from what I've seen him pull with some of the top eight guys, I, I think he's just going to be overpowering. Um, it'll be interesting to see, you know, who survives between you and chance. Cause you guys are a little bit more equal as far as size and, and technique. I know you've developed your outside Michael Todd move a lot, probably since the last time I pulled you. I think you really showed a, a big difference from what we pulled in the past. So um, I think that move is definitely his Great. kryptonite. So it's going to be good. <laughs> I don't know. I feel, I feel like your match and Chance's match is going to look very similar to my match with Chance. So um, good luck with that. Um, but I definitely think you're you're in the you're in the game for sure. Hey, we did miss another super chat from Chance Shaw. Four ninety nine. He says, "Thanks for the kind words, John. I got a PM saying you're up for a rematch. Is that true?" <laughs> yeah, I said, this, "Start your GoFundMe. I, I, I can yeah. easily be bought as soon as the the cash is uh, in the account. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I'll okay. uh, I'll even fly to Florida." Oh, right. let's do it! Let's do it! Let's do it! Uh, I'm I'm in. I can. You can't help but when you see that crowd and it's like, I mean, John, we got to keep you in there. We got to keep you playing. We're not letting right. you go. We're not All letting right. you go. The community is going to rally. Hey, John, thank you for coming back on RMTV. Uh, no problem, we'll, Gary. We'll, we'll all get to work on making sure you got those, got something else going. All right. All right. Keep the talk going. I see keep you, John. Wrestling exciting. John. All right, Ryan. Good luck to you next uh, month or two months, whatever it is. Two months. Keep the training hard. John, pleasure meeting you. You too, buddy. Thanks a lot, All man. All right. Take Thank care. you, brother. Bye-bye. Mr. Espy. Now I see all these guys in the chat that are like, oh, Ryan's not saying anything. When the, the greatest arm wrestler to ever walk the face of the earth comes into the room, you shut the fuck up and you let him talk. Yeah. Right? <laughs> okay. I mean, Gary doesn't. <laughs> Relax, but... <laughs> everybody. I mean, I just have, I have a panic for dead space. Like, I know like, you do. Like, I, I know you do. <laughs> what's, uh, I'm like, if there's like four seconds of no, no talking or three seconds, it feels like forever. And I just had to keep, keep it going. I so it. he uh, brought something up interesting. He says your match would be very similar. Why does he say that? Uh, <laughs> You know, when, <laughs> when I said that I felt confident more so, he just kind of reiterates that. That's kind of, you know, my side pressure is at a level right now. Um, man, I just feel like I have the tools. Like, I get, I get beat up a little bit for this, thinking that I've made progress during COVID and all this stuff when I haven't been on a table and for years i mean let's face it i haven't been on the competition arm wrestling table for years but man that's all i've been doing is focusing on arm wrestling for the past two years it would be crazy for me to think that i wasn't stronger and now we've started practices and historically i've trained on a table once every two weeks we've ramped that up i've got mazelle helping me with my diet 
I'm doing weekly practices and still hitting the gym four days a week. So it's, you know, there's going to be no bullshit, no excuses. If Chance manages to win this match, I will support him 100% as the man going forward. And that's it. I mean, you can't, you, you're allowed as an arm wrestler to believe that your training is working and you're yeah. getting strong. Yeah. I mean, like commenters, like these guys, they're training hard. I mean, let's, let's face it. All of you, he, he, Uncle John, not only is he training his arm wrestling, but the man's lost a thousand pounds. I mean, this is hard work. Well, the you. other part of it is there, there is a mental aspect to this too, right? The month before this last weekend, I was really slumping because it'd been so long. I'm like, is this working? I don't know. I don't, I don't pff, I, who knows? This weekend really reiterated that everything is working, right? And I think, I think that is, if you are being consistent, you have to be honest with yourself, right? If you're being consistent, you're getting your training sessions in, it will, it will go up if you are putting in the time and effort. It's just that arm wrestlers in general have a tough time being honest with themselves sometimes. Well, here's, here's, I, I, I don't, I, I think this situation, you just mentioned the two years, not arm wrestling. It's a lot like, uh, you know, abstinence in sex, like that energy's bottled up and I feel it's just going to end up with fireworks at the arm wrestling table. The, the, the feeling of you guys being there, the arm wars, the big stage, it'll be a lot like this. The energy just like, yes, finally. I think it's going to be amazing arm wrestling. You know what I mean? Win or lose for anyone, I think it's going to be epic. The way things are set up right now, if Chance loses to me, he should be ranked 50th in North America because I'm not even in the top goddamn 15 so it's interesting that uh things work out that way and all these people telling me that sp is gonna or oh well, somebody said sp will smash chance but everyone else is saying a lot of people are saying chance is gonna crush sp you know uh well here's the deal chat a lot of you guys may not know ryan sp but i i've watched the man arm wrestle throughout the years and he is capable if he's doing what he says he's capable of of throwing it down so I mean, the best thing Chance can do is is give you that respect. You are capable of doing that. Like you, the last thing Chance should do is go in underestimating, you know, and leaving that door open. It's like, dude, Ryan's capable of being badass, and <laughs> I, you you got good energy. So if you get fired up, like you can bring it. You can bring it. So everyone should be ready for everyone to be at their at the top. You know what I mean? Bring in their best. I don't know. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, it's really interesting to me. Like, if I didn't think, you know, Chance was good, why would I take a match with him? It's, um, there's other options out there. Like, I got lots scheduled, but, I mean, this is a good opportunity. Neil Pickup has always believed in me, and he's given us this opportunity to do it on his stage. And like we were talking about, Neil Pickup is a matchmaker. He wouldn't bring these four together unless he was planning on it being awesome. <laughs> like, so mm-hmm. I believe it will be. Well, but mark my th- words. If Arm Wars reality check October first to the third goes off as planned, it's gonna be it's gonna be the hottest ticket uh, of that weekend. I'll tell you that much. Oh, I gotta get my uncle. Left-handed to- match there. You guys know about that. You wait a second. You said you had a left-handed match there too. I also too? have a left-handed match at Armour. against who? It's just me and Alex. Ah, very interesting. Yeah. But wait, what happens if we do get some? I re, I was watching Chance's broadcast, and he says his focus will be Armour's. If we start building hype up for a, a John Brzezink rematch, and we're we're now building up the Jerry. Can Chance do all of that? He's young. He can handle it. But, I mean, here's the deal. Why is there an immediate rematch? The only time you Because it was so fun. (laughs) It's fun, yeah, but there's a ton of fun matches out there. 
if somebody gets an immediate rematch, it's usually because they were the champion of something and they have a rematch clause. There was nothing in this match that I saw that would warrant an immediate rematch. And there's a million matches out there for Chance Shaw. He's not interested in pulling Corey West. I don't understand that. I don't understand that. Corey West is interesting. And there's a ton of other heavyweights around. Why not take a shot at one of them? I know that John is the guy, but, you know. Well, okay, the, okay. Then you that give match me. match can happen two years from now, and the story is the same. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Ryan Espy, it's only just because it's so fun. Right. To watch John. So who, if John doesn't have a rematch, who does the arm wrestle next? Would it be Corey? Literally anybody. Like any super heavyweight that's in the top 10, John could make an exciting match. Uh, I think it's just fresh talk. Chance will probably confirm, yo, yo, yo. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, Jerry Armors and another John match. Maybe that is too much. So uh, I think the Armors obviously got to keep your priorities there that you can't, like, you would never cancel Neil to do something else. So he seems to want Cataret real bad, but Cataret would happen after Armors. Is that what I'm understanding? Is Cataret interested in this? I'm, I'm a little lost. There, there was some talk going on between Jerry Chance and Paul Italia on Facebook today. And Jerry is kind of, it seems like Jerry's kind of treating it as, yeah, 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 I get it, guys, but you're real excited, but I'm going to smash you anyways. You know, he, he seems to be on board with the idea that he is at a very, very different level. Than, than chance is when it comes down to reality and non-practice table pulling. I'm going to have to reach out to Mr. Jerry. It's been a minute. Going to have to reach out to him. Hey, we uh, missed, uh, we got to apologize to a couple people. They, they sent uh, super chats in rate as John was leaving and they had questions for John Gizmo said, uh, John, when training for a match, do you have a certain amount of weeks you like to train for, or would you used to just train year round? And then Eric Rasin, 699 Super Chat, said, old school question, John, did Clay, Clay Rosencrantz have any wins over you during your early days in the sport? Oh, damn it. So we Sorry, just missed guys. Those. Oh, my bad. Sorry about that, Mr. Rasin and Gizmo. Thank you for your Super Chats. Maybe I'll text John those questions. Uh, ah, he probably wouldn't have to type. I don't know what to do. Damn it. Uh, so so Uncle John, what are your thoughts? What Uncle Ryan John. just said uh, that the uh, rematch would be too fast. I'm, I would like some variety. We have enough repetition. We had enough repetition before COVID, right? With with WAL and you know really playing a lot of matches up. Which it's not like it's horrible. Like I'll watch the matches, but I agree with Ryan. Like there, there's a lot of matches out there right now. There are a lot of people that I would like to see John pull. There's a lot of people I'd like to see Chance pull. And uh, I I would like to see them all. But at the same time, I hope uh, the guys that are in the position of like Chance don't go so hard that, you know, because there is going to be those opportunities. So if he starts pulling a super match every other weekend, you know, that will catch up eventually. It might not be today. It might not be this year, but it, it will catch up eventually. Uh, what is going on? What's next? What's the next exciting thing in arm wrestling? Uh, King of California, maybe. That's got Derek Smith um, and Derek Tom Nelson. That's a right-handed match, yeah. which I find interesting. Yep. Um, what does that do to Derek if he loses to Tom Nelson going into arm wars? It hurts him. It hurts him. Because Tom's not really known as, I mean, Tom's a, a good arm wrestler, but I don't think he's known as like a super duper elite right-handed arm wrestler. No, he's not. Uh, is there a reason where, I mean, am I just, because Ryan is on and then Chance has had to match him, uh, what John said that Derek is not going to beat Kurdecha, is that, is that a, I mean. He said, Alex, he said that Alex would kind of come out on top of that and then potentially lose to myself or chance is what I think he alluded to. And so uh, Derek is the complete underdog in this group. 
Uh, it's an unknown. Like I, it, if you go by two years ago, yes, it for sure is, but not much has happened because of what the world just went through. So Derek could come in and um, just kill everybody. Like it could happen. It could happen. I mean, there's been situations where you see a guy like Michael Todd and he is, you know, putting, putting along and he's in the middle of the class he's kind of getting the odd win here and there and all of a sudden killer, you know, cause that happened. People don't remember the ascension of Michael Todd. He used to be a 190 pound arm wrestler when I first met him and he hung around that 242 class forever. Even took it, went to the worlds a few times in that class. And then all of a sudden he turns into the guy we see today and I can pinpoint the exact moment that happened because it was on the, <laughs> the terrace suite of the MGM Grand when I ran into a Michael Todd that was suddenly much, much better than I anticipated. You remember the day? I was the guy that had to arm wrestle him. And, um, yeah. Is I, that, that was Neil Pickup. That was Arm Wars, right? That was Arm Wars. Oh, man, I was there. The most famous Arm Wars, like the most recognizable Arm Wars, maybe. With the, in the North America, for sure. In Europe, yeah. yeah. Uh, I was there. I'm killing myself that I didn't beg uh, Neil to let me film the matches. I filmed the interviews, but I didn't film the actual matches. He said he shut me down, shut me down. But uh, I, if I would have had those matches as backup, he'd probably let me share them today. Then I could tie them to the interviews for a sweet edit. I can't wait. To, man, there's so much I haven't shared. Oh, my God. The like the commu- Japanese worlds, Gary. I got the footage from the TV show that aired that in Japan. And I was sworn to secrecy for years, but I thought a decade was enough. And I put it on my YouTube channel. Hmm. Wait, wait, wait. Which one? Say it again. 2005 worlds in Tokyo. You have that? I put it on YouTube. It's on my channel right now. Oh, I'm going to have to go check it out. Do you want to know something terribly sad and distressing? Absolutely. uh, Over the years, there's been a few lost events due to hard drives and things. My website crashed one time and the hard drive went bad. And Tokyo Worlds is one thing that I lost. I have no footage that I filmed from Tokyo Worlds. Isn't that? sad that's too bad it's the lost footage of my one win over tim bresnan yeah mm. uh man dude that trip I can't, that was an amazing trip i'd never left my hotel room i i mean i left i went from hotel to venue hotel to venue hotel to venue hotel to, the one time i went out into the town was when i had to go buy a hard drive i went to like a tokyo flea market that was a crazy trip man and the last night when we went to rapunji Rapunji. What, what, yeah, what? Nightclub the... district. Oh, <laughs> oh, do you know what? I don't know if anyone knows this. Do you know what happened in Tokyo? I think that's I think that's one of the first times I ever bonded uh, with Don Fritchie. That opened the door for the ROTN in the future. Like we became we became close to that uh like that was like the first time we really like had a great conversation. He was like, I love what you're doing and da da da. I was like, so that was kind of a cool little, like, you know, arm wrestlers meeting across the world in Tokyo. Repulsive couple, uh, super chat. Peter Fenter also $5 super chat with message retracted. <laughs> oh, Peter, why'd you retract message? Uh, what about repulsive gravity? He says, I've watched numerous videos of the John versus Chance match, and Gary's was by far the best. Thanks for the great interviews, Gary. You are still king. That's very sweet. That's very sweet. Uh, You know what? Uh, I think it turned out okay, given how it all started. Uh, So thank you very much. Thanks for watching. uh, Oh, I don't know if you guys seen, but uh, I have. Let's see. I have I have 800 thumbs ups 
and three down votes. On that video? Yeah. Nice. Eight, That's pretty eight, good. 800 to three. Who is the three down votes? Uh, I don't know. Probably the three women that you could beat. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> I thought... I don't. Is anyone ever batted like a hundred percent thumb votes? Is, does it exist? Oh, I'm, I'm sure some things that do, but it's just it's just a matter of there's a certain type of person out there who feels like their penis grows an inch every time they give a thumbs down, and so then they can actually have like a three or four inch penis instead of not having one at all. Oh, well, they have the exact same effect on the algorithm, so it kind of actually... yeah, it's it's just as beneficial to get the thumbs down as it is the thumbs up, from what I hear. So, you know, P Peter gave more money just to re-ask the question. All right, Peter, uh, is there a date set for Dave versus Levon? Seems like it's been alluded to for like a year. What's the holdup? September the fourth, I believe, because I just answered this question elsewhere. Uh, that's. Uh... Gary, Travis Riggs, Gary, I pulled in the tournament. You did great on Saturday. Travis, I feel like we've met before, right? Did we talk? Did we talk on Saturday? Why do I know? I feel like I know your name from past, the past days. That name sounds very familiar. I apologize if uh, I'm forgetting. All righty, guys. Is there anything we haven't discussed? Uh Somebody mentioned my Marcio match, and that's still tentatively scheduled, but it's not until November. Mm. Yeah, August, September. Yeah, November seems like so long ago, but, man, these months are just cruising by. It's going to be here before we know it. Ryan, so we got eight weeks approximately before uh, arm wars. Is there anything that you're doing between now and then? Training really, yeah. really hard and eating like a maniac. Nice. Nice. So after the chance, watching Chance and John Brzezink, do you do anything different in your training? Not a thing. Not a thing. Not a thing. Not one thing. Very interesting. What is the uh, – let's do uh, – I. you're cool, right? I, I, Are you cool, Ryan? Are you cool? I so. Okay. I, well, I'd like I to think I am. Everyone in there is calling me a socialist. I don't know what the hell. <laughs> well, listen, listen. Canada is just uh, automatic, I think. There is some of these new arm wrestlers. <clears throat> I don't know. They're a little weird. So the not, not, I don't know. The chat can be rough. But so should I not? Uh, just because you've been gone for a few years, the, the chat doesn't, doesn't know you as well as they know Chance? Well, Chance is hot right now. Yeah. yeah. Chance has had some good exposure lately, and he works hard on his channel. Oh, Polar Magazine. Yeah, shout out to Giordano Cruz. He made I, – I asked him if he'd come on the show, but he said he can't. He made this trailer for John and Chance. I mean, it must have taken forever to make that. I cannot believe how good it is, the timing of the music. If you haven't checked that out, go to Polar Magazine. Subscribe to that channel. No. It's amazing. Anyways, I wanted to ask him about it, but he couldn't come on. Uh, damn it, I'm running out of things to talk about. Well, that's all right. I think uh, I, I think it's it's going to be an interesting few months coming up, well, leading up to Arm Wars. There's a couple big hitter tournaments that are coming up around uh, the U.S. Hopefully, I hope to God, the freaking border is a little easier to cross. But now... Flights are insane. I was trying to get back to Minnesota. I looked two weeks ago, $1,200 to get to Minnesota to see my family. Now, what? $1,800 to no. get from Nova Scotia to Minnesota. Now, listen, listen. You have the Ryan Bowen problem. You moved to, to some place weird. Like, if you want to grow the sport of arm wrestling via traveling, you did not pick a friendly, I know. A friendly location. Hey, Come I, got, on. I got like four more years here. Four more Re years. Relocate down to Chicago. You can get, you can get anywhere. I'm so torn. I've been pushing my family to move to Portland because that's where my family is. But I like if for arm wrestling, Chicago is actually not a bad place to be. But I, I totally forgot before we go, I forgot about something so important. The John Brzezink, Chance shot 
now I'm trying to think about why I didn't get this with Devin and Michael. With Devin and Michael, I was like, yeah, I mean, I'm just not in love with the super match format. But this Chance and John match, it kind of reminded me how super matches can be amazing. And I'm like, why didn't that happen with Devin and Michael? I think if I was there with Devin and Michael, it would have been, there's something about being there in the moment that really got me re-inspired to think, oh, this is badass. And it's a lot easier to edit, too. We just got two guys. But so I wanted to say I was hating on super matches a little bit earlier, promoting the tournament format. But I, I got to say, when, when, the, when the match is great and competitive, man, it could be awesome. Yeah, you got to have guys that actually want to arm wrestle each other, right? That helps. Yeah. Well, you had, are you talking about Michael and Devin being not the best as far as the gap that was there? Because it's a miss, it was, let's face it, it was a mismatch at the time. Like no one expected Devin to come in and just yeah make I it think, relatively easy. Yeah, I think when it's not close, it, it is, I mean, I guess this is a problem in all sports. We've all watched UFC or boxing when it's like not even close. We're like, Eh, you know, we're not. Uh, you know what, though, Gary, the crowd, uh, the Canadian Chihuahua says the crowd was more reserved in Dubai. And when when Brzezink won and the crowd was like, Gah! it was like a huge pop. Yeah. And that is that is a different type of situation. Then it goes from an event to a, a near spiritual uh, occurrence. Right. Oh, dude, it's so true. I've been watching the Olympics and I'm like, dude, you should have canceled it. If you can't right. have the Olympics without crowds, like it's not the same. Well, These the gymnasts, UFC they're too. like, they're doing their show and it's like to an empty building. I'm like, yeah, it's just it's not the same it's thing. It's just, it's just different. Oh, that's a good point. And yeah, crowd, the crowd was amazing. Um, well guys, Hey dude, I got to go change my kid, get him ready for bed. Thank you, Ryan, for coming on. Uh, you guys got two months for arm wars, both of you. How much rest time will you give it before how many days out will you call training off to just rest, be fresh? For me, uh, I will probably uh, do a two week wind down, but I will continue doing things up until a couple days before, probably. It will just get more, you know, to keep myself kind of fresh, keep the blood flowing in there but I, I will probably stop going super hard a week and a half, two weeks before. Ryan. Most likely a week and a half. I will stop all hard training, do blood flow for about three or four days after that, and then completely rest for a week. And then what I found most interesting about the chance and John match, they literally did. They came up to that table, 100% cold. I didn't see anyone pulling on any of their arms. They didn't, touch anyone they didn't stretch it out is that weird is that normal you consider how they pull because neither one of them is a real big hitter and that's where you're going to need the warm-up what do you mean say again neither one of them is a really big hitter hitting you needs more saying? warm yeah well that's where the collisions happen right yeah and so what will you will you do you go cold or do you hit you hit right yeah I get warmed up a little bit, but nothing crazy. I, I do bands generally beforehand just to get, just to get, I like, I like to feel the blood in there, let the blood come up a little bit, let it go down. But like, this might be a little while before, like 20 minutes before to just get that feeling in there. And a lot of it is like more in my shoulders and my back. And I want like to feel good. I just want to make sure my arms feel good and my body feels connected. Uh, when I went to that event, what stands out to me is I literally, when the event was over, I got so excited about going uh, to do footage that I, I didn't do any after pulling. I didn't arm wrestle anybody. And I'm kind of sad about that, but uh, I had a, I had to be at the airport at five in the morning, but I went to this great event, amazing crowd. And I didn't arm wrestle once. I feel terribly mm. sad about it. 
because uh, I know I could have bitch slapped some of those dudes out at Martinsburg, West Virginia. So I'm going to come back. You keep in mind, I'm coming back for you bitches. All right, guys. Hey, I'm going to let you go. Thank you very much, everyone in the chat. Thanks for coming on again. Like always, we've hit show 30 up in here. And uh, man, dude, it was an exciting weekend. We didn't even talk about uh, Krazy's match. Yeah, or Wasega. Yeah. Oh, 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 Devin had stuff too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got uh, about we got about like 33% of the way through everything. Oh shit, we didn't even talk about what what is the Mantis Mantis is that Mantis is a, is a place where they had a whole bunch of matches in Ontario, the notable matches, I would say. Evan Burgoyne won his hand, uh, right and left-handed matches against Conrad Roussel. Uh, Brendan Lemon Mulvihill won his matches left and right against Giannick uh, Quais. Um, Grippler got beat significantly easily by Curtis Cameron Porkchop, which I, is incredible. How did Porkchop? I thought there was already a Porkchop out of Louisiana. Matt Bertrand well, Porkchop. This Porkchop is the just, one now. He's just chop. He's oh, just chop Bertrand. Yeah, that's just chop. This is pork chop. Yeah. Oh, chop. Okay, my bad. That is, chop chop. is now in my mind. I consider him a very real problem. Absolutely, wow. he is. And he is a, the, the question is, why did Ian come forward every match? I don't know. That's that's a tough one for me. Because it was right into to pork chops power zero hand test on his side of the table i i did watch the blm match some somebody was saying there was some trash talk i i heard on the stream like yeah, eat that eat your words here well here's here's what i found out especially in that left-handed match i thought brendan lemon mulvihill was a good technical arm wrestler and he looked like he was all over the place in that match with really no form whatsoever. I don't know if he was just trying to show off or what, but he, uh, I, I don't know what the situation was, but he looked really wonky to me. Second best arm wrestler in Canada, John. I guess I can't argue with that. <laughs> Although he was completely under the table most of the time and also not doing King's move. So I don't know. I don't know what was going on there. Uh, wait, Damn, there was a, I'm sorry we missed all that, but. Uh, did you arm wrestle Mazel? How's he feel? Uh, Mazel feels very, very strong. Uh, you, you can beat we, him. We did pull quite a bit. We, I got some footage uh, coming out of me pulling Mazel and a bunch of the other Newfoundland guys. Uh, Mazel, I don't know how much I want to say right now, but Mazel, once he gets a command of of starting and uh, getting his starts down, is going to be a significant problem in. Uh, in in atlantic canada very very quickly possibly as soon as october when we have atlantics so what you're saying is i can flash that big dude uh I, I would say <laughs> you guys should set up a big money match gary <laughs> and <laughs> hey hey i i had my claim to fame is i went to the kentucky muscle and some bodybuilders there's a video on arm tv where i arm wrestled this bodybuilder dude and he had all arm but no no hand. And I just, I flopped his hand. It was the most amazing thing I ever done. I just laid on his hand. He's a big old bicep. And I was like, you ain't coming back from that, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Hey guys, gotta go. I love you all. This was an amazing weekend for arm wrestling and let's keep doing this business. Sounds good, man. Thanks chat. Thanks guys. See Thanks you guys. Ryan. See you Ryan. Bye bye. Oh, Ryan, what's your channel? Plug that shit. You know where to find me. Just search Ryan Espy on YouTube. Ryan Espy. Support Ryan. He's not a socialist. <laughs> He's all posted in the chat. <laughs> yeah. Ryan Espy. He's an awesome dude.